Canadians understand the role that large unions play in our economy. But what about the smaller independent unions throughout the country? Those with a few thousand members working in towns and rural communities. This is the case of the pulp, paper and woodworkers of Canada. A fiercely independent democratic union that recently celebrated its 50th anniversary. Hi, you're in Prince George, British Columbia, and uh, we're here at the 53rd annual PPWC convention, 2015. Uh, PPWC Local 9 is hosting, and welcome. The PPWC, as it is commonly known, includes more than 3,000 workers in almost a dozen towns throughout British Columbia, including Prince George, Castlegar, Kimberley, Crofton, New Westminster, and Nanaimo. Its 2015 convention is held at a hotel in Prince George, whose workers are also members of the PPWC. Credentials report, uh, number of officers is six. Credentials committee is two. Delegates is 34. Observers and guests is 22 for a total of 64 when I submit that report. Rolston. Here. Local 2. Benjamin. Here. Fisher. Present. Hartley. Here. Landigo. Here. Bottlestone. Here. Local 5. Folkers. Nope. Jackson. Here. McClellan. Here. Smith. Here. Young. There we go. Yes. Local 8. Jean. Yep. Federici. Yes. Despite its name, the union includes more than just pulp and paper workers. PPWC is made up of um, all kinds of members in all kinds of careers and all kinds of positions all over the province. There are pulp um, members, there are paper members, the, we have box plants, we have taxi drivers, we have um, cooks, we have a, a whole array. They're not just pulp and paper. But we're much more than that now. We look after colleges and we look after diversified plants such as uh, plastics plants and, and other printing plants. Uh, we look after uh, secretaries and that sort of thing. So we have a much more diversified uh, membership than we ever have and we hope to continue doing that into the future. The PPWC was founded in 1963 by Orville Bratton and Angus McPhee as a democratic independent union free from influence of the conservative-minded American unions of the time. The PPWC has been around for a long time and gone through quite a history um, as an independent Canadian union. The fight that they were in and you listen to the stories of some of these guys and it's phenomenal. We can't even imagine today what that was like. I can't imagine what that was like. In 1965, the year I started, the, the convention in Vancouver at the Ritz Hotel, and I'm sure none of the, a lot of the sisters and brothers don't know this, uh, was bugged. So we caught the international bugging 
the PPWC convention. So when the delegates come back, us, some of us young Turks there, we were just fit to be bloody tied. We could go to the credit union in the small towns. There was no payments to be made. We were full of piss and vinegar. And we had no pension plan. We had nothing but, boy, we had lots of zip. Our primary focus will always be the cornerstones that those people gave us. That's, the, you know, the democracy, the transparency, the local autonomy. They, they built this union. The thing that I really appreciate is every benefit I have today, uh, somebody was on strike for. You know, it wasn't given to me by a company that, that feels I deserve it. You know, the wages that, that I bring home compared to the average family are, are incredible. And I still have to go back to somebody fought for, for those in their career. You know, they walked the picket line. They went without to provide for the next generation or the, the next decade of people coming through. I was young and lots of ambition. And so I got coached by a lot of the old timers, uh, the presidents of, of Local One in Castlegar and, and Angus McPhee. I was, <laughs> Noster and I are cut from the same cloth. This is still, um, it's funny, I didn't realize how important it was to me until, until I came to the convention today and it pushes all of these buttons and important ones to me in my life uh, and, and, uh, and good ones. Convention is always good. You connect with a lot of different people from different locals and their, their differing uh, ideas and you just connect that way. Everybody seems to be on board with uh, the concerns that arise that that come up um, I just the members seem to be uh, happy with the democracy of the union it's definitely a union that's based upon democracy I get the sense that the PPWC has uh, they're good listeners and they understand what their members need and want and they offer the ability for us to try to achieve those things you know the idea that you the decisions you make on the shop floor are the decisions that you're going to live by um, that's hugely important for, for people and that's what everybody wants out of life. That's what they, people want the opportunity to control their own destiny. What really got me involved with the PPWC is the democracy side of it. You have a voice. You have, everybody has a decision, is, makes the decision in, that, in this union. It's not, not just the president making the, that decision for you. You get to make a decision. Talking to other guys that you know are unionized in that, that they they look at us and they go, "You're able to do that within your membership. Your your membership is directing your your president or your national president and that type of thing." And I think that's the most unique thing about the PPWC is it isn't me as president of the local telling our members this is the way we're going to do it, guys and gals. It's them coming to me at a meeting and saying, "Chuck, this is how we're going to do it." The PPWC is also politically active, supporting progressive struggles in Canada for workers' rights, social justice, and economic democracy. Our committee has organized quite a number of events, and I'm happy to say that members of PPWC and CCU have been involved right from the very beginning, right from the very day that we uh, formed the committee. And I'm speaking, of course, like with uh, Frank, Arnie, Chuck, Stewart, to name just a few. And years ago, when it used to be the NDP fighting the Bill Bennett's crew yeah. there, they both believed that the people of BC own the materials. Yeah. The Liberals don't believe we own it. No. The Liberals believe it's there to be sold off. We don't want to go back when we spent so much hard work and time and blood and sweat and tears moving forward and becoming what we are today. The Harper government stands as a major obstacle to develop alternatives that work for Canada and our people. According to Harper, there is no other way but his way. But again, that is not true. We can, we must defeat the Harper government in the next federal election. And we need to find the ways and means to do this. The union is also deeply committed to environmental sustainability, believing that protecting our forests, air, and water 
can go hand in hand with job creation and economic development. It's the old story. If you cut every tree down tomorrow, then Arnie doesn't have a job. If you don't cut any, then Arnie doesn't have a job. So it's really finding that balance. And I think we're one of the few unions that really works closely with Greenpeace. Um, I sit on the board of the Forest Stewardship Council. I'm back on that. I sat there for eight years um, certifying forests, um, taking into account other people's interests, not just the forest industry. Most of the issues around environmental and forestry now, not, not most of them, a, a lot of them overlap. Uh, climate change in, in, involves forestry, forestry involves climate change, the, the, the differences in water and, and ocean stuff, it's all, it's all part of the big picture. I don't think and I know it. young people care about the environment. Older people should care about the environment and I think, you know, it's a learning process for some of us as we get older. But there's certainly been a lot of good work carried out by this union. Disproportionate, quite frankly, to the size of our union. We've done tremendous work in that area. At the time of convention, the Faculty Association of the nearby University of Northern British Columbia is on strike to defend public education. The PPWC decides to halt convention for an afternoon and join the striking workers on their picket lines in solidarity. We are currently taking job action because faculty want um, equal pay in accordance with other universities. So we feel that even though this is a small university, we are doing great things and we want recognition. I'm here today with our, uh, our friends from the PPWC to support uh, our brothers and sisters in the UMBC Faculty Association. We're here in support of a strong publicly funded education system. And we're here in support of the educators that actually make the system work. Education is a right. It's, it's, it's not a business. It's a, it should be a public delivered service and the corporatization of education. It's bad for the workers, it's bad for the students, and it's bad for this country. And we need to take it back. At convention, Members debate a proposal that will alter the direction of the union forever. A resolution is brought forward to change the name of the union itself, a move that would symbolize its ongoing efforts to better connect with younger workers in new developing industries. Whereas Pulp Paper Woodworkers of Canada has a long history representing workers in our province, and whereas the proud name Pulp Paper and Woodworkers of Canada no longer accurately reflects the diversity found within our union. And whereas opportunities exist to expand our reach and future diversify our membership, therefore be it resolved, the national constitution from this organization shall be known as the Pulp Paper and Woodworkers of Canada, PPWC2. This organization shall be known as the Public and Private Workers of Canada, PPWC, be started. Submitted by NEB, we are recommending concurrence. By passing this resolution, you're uh, okaying us to then move into the next phase of the process of changing our name. Uh, Arnie will then, under the rules and terms of our Constitution, call a special convention of all of the convention delegates here in the room um, back together again and that uh, convention will be to deal with this one issue only and that will be to change the name of our organization. The people that we thought the most would probably speak against it, the old timers, the people that aren't in the chains that are strong PPWC under the name Pulp and Paper Workers, Woodworkers of Canada, they warmed up to it and we're sitting back going holy shit we had people, okay, what's this person going to be like? People that have always spoke up at stuff. They warmed right up to it. They said it makes sense because that's the direction our union's been going for quite a few years. I'm excited about the name change, but we are more diversified now than we ever have been. We're no longer just pulp and paper workers or woodworkers. Um, you know, we, we have very diverse locals and we hope to continue with that approach. So it gives us the ability, and, and there's other places we'd like to recruit you know, that are non-union, and this encompasses it. And when you go and recruit and say, we have woodworkers, we have hospital workers, we have uh, hotel workers, we have banks, we have universities. universities, we're so diverse. 
a lot of people, you know, when you say you belong to PPWC, pulp paper woodworkers, right? They say, but you're not, you're not at a mill, you're not, why are you associated with them? And the reason we are is because of, of their, their ideals, their independence, their grassroots, that you, it comes from the bottom up, not from the top down. I mean, I think it's a lot easier for a union or people that are looking for a union to accept one that's that uh, has a name, a name a name yeah, that's neutral, that. well, neutral, yeah. right? It's more neutral. Yeah. yeah. Going from the PPWC uh, as the pulp paper and woodworkers of Canada, and possibly transitioning into the public and private workers of Canada, is is really um, just just a first step in a transformation that we will need to make as a union to. Uh, to stay relevant and, and to still protect the rights of workers in a in an environment that's getting harsher for us. Um, the realization of today, it's just the fact that they're not going to build any more pulp mills and you're not going to see new sawmills spreading up all over and there's only so much fiber. And for this mill to, or for this union to be progressive and, and keep sustaining itself, um, it has to reach out and branch out into different areas. You, you obviously want to bring in new workers and and um, more people into your union but you want to do it for the right reasons you want to do it for the reasons that you think um, you know you don't want to just be a dues collecting machine for me i guess it's quite a change because you know i've always worked in the pulp industry um, but we got to realize that in our union there's more people than just pulp and there's more people than just paper everybody is more than welcome to come into our union we're going to be around for a long time and we'll do a, I'm sure, even better job as we get more young people involved and, and this union carries on. What sort of legacy that you'll leave, um, not being perceived by other people, but what am I going to do on the planet that when it comes a time that I feel that I've done something for society? I have watched many sunsets, walked many miles. My confidence has touched the moon and hit the ground. I have been lost, I have been found. I have seen birth and I have watched death. I've lived out fantasy and faced reality. Most of all, I have found I'm only human, capable of mistake and change, happiness or pain. We are never too old to learn, fall in love, start over, or finish what has begun. I feel the brotherhood and sisterhood of what unions were meant to represent, the workers. This is the message you see. The workers started the unions, the workers are the unions. Age is not a number, age is a privilege denied to some. Live every day no matter what tears say. As long as there is time, the sun will shine again, the world will find a way to find a better day.